Hello and welcome. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our biology playlist. In previous videos, we have talked about spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Today, we'll talk about fertilization. So, let's get started. Free gifts are coming when we reach 300,000 subscribers, which, which will happen very soon. So, make sure to hit that bell to get notified when I release that video because they will not last for long. And let's answer the question of the previous video. A female neonate was born with 200 primary oocytes in her right ovary. Assuming that she will start menstruating at age 15, please calculate at what age will she reach menopause. So this is easy. First, 200 from the right ovary means 200 from the left ovary. 200 plus 200, you have 400 primary oocytes. Each primary oocyte will give you secondary oocytes, so we have 400 secondary oocytes. Each secondary oocyte will give you only one ovum and three useless polar bodies. So now we have 400 beautiful mature ovum. Menstruation happens once every 28 days, and we have 356 days per year. 356 divided by 28 equals 13 cycle per year. And since we have 400 over, so 400 divided by 13 equals 30 years. She will start menstruating at age 15. 15 plus 30 equals 45 years. At age 45, she will reach menopause. Believe it or not, this question is incorrect. It has a fatal mistake. And thanks to Metab who showed me this in the comment section. Here is the problem with this question. It's not true that each primary oocyte will give you one secondary oocyte. In fact, out of about 15 primary oocytes, only one follicle will mature and get ovulated. But this is for the very sophisticated people. Fertilization. What do you know about fertilization? Oh, I know fertilization. It's when the sperm meets the ovum. Shut up. Not true. The sperm never meets the ovum. The sperm meets the secondary oocyte that is arrested in metaphase 2. Once the sperm goes deep inside the secondary oocyte, it will be released from the arrest and it will mature into an ovum. Sperm plus ovum equals zygote. As you see, this is oogenesis, we have two arrests. First arrest at prophase 1, second arrest at metaphase 2, prophase 1 and metaphase 2. Once the sperm gets deep inside the ovum, it will be released from the arrest in metaphase 2 and it will mature from a secondary oocyte into a mature ovum. The ovum is always X. The sperm, it depends, could be X or Y. X plus X, that's a female. X plus Y, that's a male. Where does fertilization happen? Here. In number four, this is the widest area of the fallopian tube known as the ampulla, the widest. Imagine a couple making out at Times Square, the widest area in New York City. So, fertilization happens here at the ampulla of the fallopian tube. However, Implantation happens here at the body of the uterus, usually in the postero superior aspect of the uterus. Here. We have discussed the hormones before in this playlist known as biology. The spermatogonia makes sperms. Who's gonna help the process of spermatogenesis? Sertoli cell under the influence of FSH from the anterior pituitary under the influence of GnRH from the hypothalamus. Let's leave the testicle and go to the ovary. Inside the ovary we have beautiful follicles. Out of every 15 follicles, only one will have the honor to become a mature ovum. Who's gonna stimulate the follicle to grow and mature? The follicle stimulating hormone known as FSH. How about the LH? This is the luteinizing hormone. It surges at day 14 and then ovulation will happen, and then the ovum is pushed to the outside, and then the follicle is called a luteal body, which will secrete progesterone to maintain the lining of the uterus. In case pregnancy happens, if pregnancy does not happen, progesterone will drop like a rock, estrogen will drop like a rock, and the lining of the uterus will drop like a rock. It's called menses. FSH function in females to stimulate the follicle in males to actually form estrogen from testosterone. We call this aromatization. Also, it helps with sperm formation called spermatogenesis. LH, female, to make the luteal body. In males, 
for lead cell stimulation to make testosterone. The phases of the menstrual cycle was discussed before in this biology playlist. Let's talk about fertilization. Here is the sperm going up, 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 up. And by the way, the uterus is contracting, trying to pull the sperm up, to suck the sperm up. You know who's helping the uterus contract? A hormone known as oxytocin, the love and bonding hormone. This is so romantic. Then the sperm reaches the fallopian tube and meets, do not say the ovum, it meets the secondary oocyte in the widest area of the fallopian tube known as the ampulla. This is the ampulla of the fallopian tube. Don't confuse the ampulla of the fallopian tube with the ampulla of Vater. Where do you see the ampulla of Vater? Let me know the answer in the comment section. Where did this ovum come from? It came from the ovary in a process known as ovulation. And by the way, this ovulation process actually ruptures the peritoneum so that the ovum can leave the ovary and reach the fallopian tube. Of course, it's not the ovum, it's the secondary oocyte, but you get the idea. When the sperm meets the secondary oocyte, it will mature to become an ovum. Sperm plus ovum equals zygote, one complete diploid cell, 2n. It has the complete number of chromosomes, which happen to be 46 in humans. After this, the zygote will divide mitotically to become a bigger cell and then a bigger cell. From one cell, 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. And then it will become a morula, and then it will become a blastocyst, and then it will get implanted in the postero superior aspect of the uterus, just close to the fundus. And this is called the body of the uterus. The structure of the sperm was discussed before. We have a head, middle piece, and tail. Don't forget, the sperm loves fructose. And GLUT5 is the glucose transporter of spermatogenesis in the seminiferous tubules. The structure of the ovum. As you know, the ovum is a cell, and therefore it has a nucleus. The nucleus has a nuclear membrane on the outside, and on the inside we have a nucleolus with a nuclear membrane. When you leave the nucleus, you reach the cytoplasm. It has some granules. We call them cortical granules. Since the ovum is a cell, it will be surrounded by a cell membrane known as the vitellin membrane. Next, we have a clear layer, which is the zona pellucida. In Latin, this literally means the clear beautiful layer it is so clear it's unbelievable and then you have the corona radiata which means the radiating crown surrounding the ovum what else had a corona radiata your brain what else the sun during solar eclipse oh i know solar eclipse it's when the sun comes shut up it's when the moon the moon comes in between the sun and the earth corona means crown and that's why the coronavirus is known as the coronavirus. Steps of fertilization. Number one, capacitation. Two, acrosomal reaction. Three, polyspermy block so that only one sperm and one sperm only will be able to penetrate the secondary oocyte. Four, completion of meiosis two. Remember the second arrest in meiosis two? Yep, metaphase two. Exactly. So that the secondary oocyte can mature into a beloved ovum. 5. Zygote formation. More about these in the next video. Sperm plus ovum equals zygote. One cell only. Anything greater than one is called an embryo. And this process is known as cleavage. Zygote, cleavage into two cells. Cleavage, four cells. All of this is mitosis. Cleavage, again, cleavage, cleavage. Until we reach the morula stage, 12 to 16. After this, it will be followed by the blastocele or the blastocyst. Then we have a lovely implantation into the body of the uterus. Anteriorly or posteriorly? Posteriorly. Close to the fundus. After this, you become a bilaminar embryo. Bilaminar, two layer. What are these two layers? Epiblast and hypoblast. Which one of them will become the actual embryo? The epiblast. Then you became trilaminar embryo. Three layers. What are these three layers? Endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. The word endo means on the inside, meso means in the middle, and ecto means on the outside. That's why the ectoderm makes the skin, specifically the epidermis of the skin. Endo on the inside, this is your respiratory tract and your gastrointestinal tract. 
I've more than 750 free videos on YouTube and I got premium courses on my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com, such as anti-cancer pharmacology course. It has 15 videos to help you master pharmacology. Thank you for watching, subscribe, hit that bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my premium courses and cases and videos and notes. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.